Hello, you're listening to All Things ADHD podcast. I'm your host, Melvin Bogard. Today's episode will focus on Black adults living with ADHD. My guest is Dr. Napoleon Higgins Jr. We are going to talk about everything from how to discuss ADHD diagnosis with family members, should you disclose your diagnosis to your boss, code switching, taking your ADHD to the church altar, cultural competency, and so much more. Let's get started. Welcome, Dr. Higgins. Could you please tell me more about you and the work that you do? Oh, happy to be here. I'm here in Houston, Texas, private practice for the last 17 years, you know, born and raised in the area. And I am a mental health professional. I am a psychiatrist. I also do child and adolescent psychiatry. And I've been doing this for a while now. And, you know, it's just great to do this type of work. I'm also past president of the Black Psychiatrists of America, uh, past president of the Caucus of Black Psychiatrists for the American Psychiatric Association, and current president of the Black Psychiatrists of Greater Houston. And then as well, I'm also CEO of Global Health Psychiatry, and we have multiple products that we have coming out uh, right now. You know, we have written many books and trying to help the black community, help people understand the black community and black people to understand their own mental health. That's a great segue into my first question. Many black people struggle to talk about mental health issues with their families out of fear of being shamed or not taken seriously. My questions are, how do we talk about ADHD to family members, and how do we address the stigma and mental health issues in the Black community? You know, one, it's important to be able to receive support and care from your family members and, and, and people who love you. But if you already know that they're not going to be supportive, there's not always a need to even let them know. Uh, especially if it's going to be painful or detrimental to yourself to do that. Now, you know, if you're very ill or very sick and you've got to say something to somebody, definitely do something. You know, the experience of ADHD and treatment really does impact the entire family. So I would prefer an individual to be able to share that. But if you're in a situation where you can't, you, you may not want to. The other thing to consider, though, is that because ADHD runs in families, if you're dealing with it, chances are somebody else in your family also has ADHD, and by not letting them know or not discussing it, it can cause another individual to be suffering needlessly, or at least to have a lack of understanding of what's going on. Well, stigma is a huge problem, and it causes a, a lot of barriers to treatment and care. Stigma typically comes out of ignorance, just a lack of knowledge and information, and then you hear bad knowledge and bad information. So that even drives further the stigma and the fear uh, of mental health. Too often we look at mental health as ridicule and not understand that mental health is a physical health problem. It is issues that affect the mind and the brain. So just like you have other organs in your body, like your liver and your heart and your lungs and your skin, you also have a brain and a brain has illnesses that change up how people behave because your brain actually drives behavior. So the point in receiving mental health is that my brain is having an issue with, with, with how it's seeing things, how it's perceiving things, or even how I outwardly act through my actions or even what I'm saying. And so you go and see a doctor that helps you uh, help them. Sometimes it requires medications. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. You know, sometimes it's suggestions of changes in lifestyle, just like anything else, like just like if you have heart disease. Sometimes you may need medications, but also... A cardiologist is going to need you to change up your diet to a low cholesterol diet and increase your exercise and get plenty of sleep. All those other things go into your overall mental health, just like they go into anything else that goes on with your body. You know, just more stigma, uh, not understanding the diagnosis. And too often I find in communities, all communities, but specifically the black community, that so often people believe there's some sort of character flaw in the issue of the person when it's more of a neurobiological issue that is causing them not to be able to focus, not to be able to pay attention, possibly be hyperactive, be impulsive in their decision making. And those are things that that are treatable, sometimes behavioral management, sometimes it's medication. But we've got to get past the stigma and get more towards knowledge because too often people suffer because of the lack of knowledge. Religion, spirituality is part of the black culture. Black people are more likely to go to the church altar for prayer than to go to a therapist. 
What do you say to that? Is there any research on treatment of ADHD with prayer? Yes and no. I would say no in that, no. I don't know of any research that says, you know, we're going to pray on this boy, lay hands on him, and send him to school, and he's going to be all right. I don't know any research that does that. But, you know, prayer is very good as part of your daily life meditation and praying over individual. I mean, I do believe that we all need positive thoughts and supportive individuals who are thinking about us, who are praying for us, who we need somebody on our side even when we're not in their presence. So that's kind of what prayer does. So I don't want to discount that part. You know, there's nowhere in the word or in the Bible where you pray and you don't do anything else and God gives you something. Like, I'm going to pray about it and I'm going to let it go. No, there's a step that goes with before that prayer will be answered. So my thought is, well, yes, pray for them. Pray for yourself, pray pray for discernment and pray for your decision making to be able to get this young man or this young lady some help. That's where we need to be at with our prayer life is what do I need to do in order to empower me so that I can help my child? And that's the mindset that we need to be with our prayer. <laughs> that's a really good answer. Let's talk about masking and code switching. What's the difference between the two? And do you feel that Black people with ADHD have an additional layer of masking or code switch because of their ADHD? Well, you know, it's hard to say. So when you look at masking, like masking yourself and how you behave around the dominant culture, and then code switching so far as being able to go between your culture and the dominant culture, we all do it. You know, we all do it to an extent. And it's not even always according to race. You know, there's a different way that I'm going to act around my homeboy versus act around my mom. There's a different way that I would even act around my homegirl back in the day versus the way I would probably act with her in front of my wife. It has nothing to do with intimate relationships at all. It's just the, the flow of your relationship with a particular person. And it can change from room to room in the immediate if needed. But when it comes to race, we have to switch up according to the dominant culture. I saw this recently on an interview where I didn't realize a friend had started filming when I got on the interview. And so when we were talking, we were talking as colleagues, as friends for well over 20 years. And so my vernacular and even my, my movements were very different. And then once I figured out, the, figured out the camera was on, then everything switched and changed. So even though I'm talking to the same person because the camera is on and now we've gone from a friendly, casual to a professional conversation, the code switched. It's not even mentally thought of, it just does. So we tend to have to do that. ADHD tends to be neurobiologically a little bit different. So I would say it could be an advantage or a disadvantage. Oddly enough, they tend to have the gift of gab because they can switch and change on a dime with whatever's going on at the time. Now, the other problem with that is that sometimes they will forget where they were and switch back out and not realize it and then go into, for lack of a better term, Ebonics nature or whatever may have happened because you just you just switch right out. So it can be an advantage, but it can be a disadvantage as well. Let's talk about disclosing your diagnosis. Should individuals disclose their ADHD diagnosis to their employer? And considering the fear of implicit bias and stereotypes, should Black people with ADHD disclose their diagnosis in any way? Generally, I probably would not. Not unless it is needed. You know, obviously, if I'm filling out a form or something or getting a license and I need to disclose, I would recommend that you disclose at that time. But in general conversation, no, because people can start to believe things like, well, he did that because he's ADHD or she did that because of this particular diagnosis and start to make one excuses for you, which is not always good. But also, you know, they say, well, we want we don't want to put them on this important project because they can't focus or pay attention. I would normally leave that out. Maybe I love, maybe the company dropped our insurance. I can't take my medication now so de directly performing my work. And now I need to make an excuse for what's going on. But generally, I would leave it out unless it was necessary. Realize that anything you say can and possibly will be used against you, be it mental health or any other thing that is going on with you. So I would be careful about who I share any mental health or physical health diagnosis with. And now, of course, if this is your close friend and you want to share that, that's up to you, but you have to judge it by an individual case-by-case -case basis. Maybe if you want to put on a t-shirt to say, I have ADHD, in order to promote the information and let people know so it can help somebody, I would do that on your own time, but not necessarily uh, in a work situation. But it depends on the individual and the circumstances with the individuals they're working with. What if I needed 
accommodations in the workplace? Typically, I would run that through HR. Attitudes about ADHD, with the work that Chad has done and many others, the attitudes about ADHD seem to have gotten better. People are more understanding and, and more willing to accommodate. Let's turn the page and talk about cultural competency. There's an article titled Culturally Competent Strategies for Assessing and Treating ADHD in African-American Adults. It states that providers must explore patients' and families' historical concepts as being history-sensitive as a fundamental way to reduce African-Americans' cultural mistrust of the mental health care system. Do you agree that this is a helpful course of action uh, for providers? Well, I would say definitely anytime you consider culture, it's a good idea. And it's not anything to run from. It's something to run into. The fact is that people say, well, I don't see race. Well, they realize there are, di- there are disparities in how individuals think about in- other individuals that we have been taught. We're, we're living in a racial construct. So, you know, if you know, I don't see color. Well, I know I'm not clear. If you're seeing a patient with pelvic pain, you need to take into account whether or not this is a man or a woman. It tells a different story. Your treatment and your outcomes are going to be different based upon what you see in front of you. So it's always important to make sure you pay attention to race because there are disparities and they are based upon race. Too often, black young men, they're more likely to be diagnosed with conduct disorder or opposition divide disorder. A black young woman who's inattentive, who's struggling in school, the person may perceive her as being slow. Well, this person can have a very high IQ, but cannot pay attention to what's going on in front of them. And so therefore we thought, well, you know, many maybe their parents are not people who are professionals when you're making a judgment. So the point is you want to make sure that you're culturally competent in everything that you do in order to make sure that you have good outcomes, but you always want to address your own biases. I can't change that I'm a black man in America. And so I would not want a doctor who walks in the room to see me to say that, well, I'm going to change it. He's not he's not going to be a black man in America when he's in my office. No, no, no. That's that's not smart. But what I need the doctor to do is do your own work. This is a black man in America. He's coming to see me at the age of mid to late 40s. And so therefore, there are health disparities and he's more likely to be dead in the next 20 years than a white patient coming in with the same age and the same level of income and the same insurance. That needs to be taken into account when I walk into the room. So the same thing with ADHD, the impact of ADHD on the black individual from childhood, who's now an adult, missed opportunities. If he did not finish from high school and he is 20 years old and he has not been incarcerated, chances are he's going to be incarcerated in the next three years. All right. I need you to take those things into account in your decision making and understanding the acuity of the situation that I have a 20 year old black male who's dropped out of high school, who's in front of me with his mom trying to get help for ADHD. That is a very powerful thing that's very different, can be very different to somebody of another nationality or of another race. So the race. The income, the resources, the mom's education, you know, she has a master's that her knowledge level may be or probably is a lot different than understanding of ADHD of a mother who dropped out of school herself, who's on financial assistance from the government. We've got to take all of that in because it's not just the diagnosis ADHD. It is all of those things coming together, which helps us to formulate what the story is and formulate a treatment plan. We got to be careful, though. We don't want to make assumptions about the individual. That's why you want to dig deeper and ask questions so that you can have a better understanding and a better outcome. How do you locate culturally sensitive doctors that diagnose and treat ADHD? Well, the, the biggest thing that you can do is make sure that you research the information yourself. Most doctors do not have a problem with an individual doing research. Now, every once in a while, people will be stuck just knowing that Google is a better doctor than the person. The last 20 minutes I spent on Google is worth in the last 20 years that he spent in school. We got to make sure we have the right perspective. But an educated individual honestly tells me that they're interested in their care. All right. So the the better you are informed, the more in-depth conversation that we can have. So we need to be informed as much as we can. If you feel like the doctor's not getting it and not getting you and not understanding you, let the doctor know. And that's not a tr- tragedy that I missed something that I should have known. So let the doctor know. As, as a woman, I feel like you're not getting what I'm saying when I talk about my trauma and dealing with my husband. And for me, if you tell me that, 
I'm not mad about it. I'm like, please let me know, because this may be the breakthrough we need to do in order for you to get better. So most doctors are going to be okay with you sharing information or letting them know. And if you let me know, if I have a blind spot, I want to plug the blind spot. There's no no celebration of staying blind. Very few docs would, I would say, even argue with you that I don't think you're seeing my issue with race and how it's impacting me. I don't think any are going to say that. I mean, no, there will be somebody. But the greater majority are not going to say, no, we're going to disqualify race today. Race doesn't matter to you or me or your diagnosis of this situation. If you have a doctor that said that, you definitely need to keep it moving. But most are going to be very interested. Dr. Higgins, according to research, minority patients benefit from having minority doctors. But there is also a shortage of black doctors in America. Realistically, what are the chances of being cared for by a black physician? And should that really matter if the provider is of another race or ethnicity? Anywhere from two to four percent, sometimes around five percent of psychiatrists are black realizing that the American population is about 13% black. So every black person will not be able to get in to see a black psychiatrist. There are certain, like they have food deserts, you got black psychiatry deserts where there is just no one there, or at least no one knows how to find them there. If you know a black doctor, ask another black doctor, even if they're of another specialty, there are medical societies and whatnot. But normally it's more or less word of mouth. You know, Google, black psychiatrists in a particular area. Chad has a website, Psychology Today, is a very good website that, that allows you to pick race, uh, area, city, zip code, and things of that sort. Um, and then now, at the same time, that does not mean that your doctor in front of you is not doing an excellent job. So you may need to work with the person that you're with. And most people are professionals who are going to try to do their best. And if there's something that they're missing, they want to know. So if you're getting excellent care, I would not recommend switching your doc if you're getting excellent care. If you got questions about it, Research, read, and even you may even want to get a second opinion, but but make sure that you reach out and find someone, even if you can't find someone black. What questions should black people ask to make sure they have a proper diagnosis and evaluation? You know, if I'm suspecting I have ADHD, there's a lot of online tools where you can have a lot of online diagnostic information. So getting your own knowledge and research about the diagnosis, it's okay to ask the doctor, are you, are you sure that it's ADHD or is this a lack of my motivation? Uh, maybe I'm distracting and just doing too much. And having an open and honest conversation, realize that with the clinical diagnosis, is done by conversing and talking to the individual. So essentially, I only know what you tell me. But if you ask me more questions, I can, I can let you know more. So I would say getting your own knowledge. And then if you have any questions about the diagnosis, make sure you ask the doctor. Because every once in a while, somebody will ask me something. Either I didn't ask it or maybe they may have missed that. But if they say that I have any focus and attention issue, but I'm also having a lot of sleeping issues. I noticed that you know, I put on like 50 pounds during COVID and my focus was off, but I also noticed my sleep was off. Well, that could be an issue of sleep apnea. But you could be diabetic now. You know, your blood sugars could be dropping on you, going too high. So all of those other things. So if you have a question, definitely ask the, ask the doctor so that they can be able to understand, know, and, and you know, even help you further. What advice do you have for Black adults who are newly diagnosed? So for those who are newly diagnosed, education, education, education. The more you know about your diagnosis, the more you do more introspection and, and understanding of yourself, the better for everybody. That's better for you, you know, and so that you know what's going on. But it also helps you be able to communicate with your doctor better. If you know more about your diagnosis, more about the symptoms, as much as you know about the medications, that's the better for the doc because we have a more a higher level of dialogue and you can get to a higher uh, optimal functioning. Is there anything else you would like to say before we end? So far as the African-American community, I would say the biggest issue that we tend to have is a lack of knowledge. The importance of treatment, how it affects you through childhood, all the way through adulthood, and how we all can get better. Knowledge is key, and I appreciate you today for bringing that knowledge to the public. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to another episode of All Things ADHD. See you next time.